Hey everyone, it's Joe Nazayas here from the Automator, and uh, we had a client who had this interesting problem. He was uh, had a compiled script, and every time he would restart his computer, he'd get a warning when it would get kicked off, saying, "Hey, this thing, you know, it's not signed. We don't know what it is. Is it is it okay? Is it legit?" And of course, with, especially if you're using AutoHotkey, you hate this, right? So, yeah. the solution of which Isaiah said was like, you know, we were talking about it, and we're like. Well, we could have someone else who's got a certificate sign it. And then Isaiah's just like, well, wait a minute. You can sign your, as long as it's on your computer, you can sign them yourself. Right. right. So and, and it's a simple talking about, yeah. solution, but it's a little complicated, the answer. But we're going to show you here in this video how to do it. Right. But basically, the main idea is that we're talking about executables. So there are some executables that you want to run. And if the executable is not signed, you might get certain types of warning depending on computer policy, if it is at work, or settings like the US UAC settings might also Different trigger. Not or not uh, to... Right, exactly. Those kind of things. Yeah. So, uh, but what to I'm be gonna... clear, yeah. if you do this on your computer and give it to someone, that, that's not going to help. That's not going to work. You're right. going to need to go to their computer and do this process for them. Right. And, and then you know. I think what they can do is install your certificate on their computer, which is something that we might try later on. But I will, and um, let me let me share exactly what I meant by that. So I'm going to share my screen. What I divided this into a few steps. The first step is downloading something that you need if you don't have it yet, which is the Windows SDK. Installing what we need, which is the uh, the sign tool. This particular tool does not come. Uh, automatically with your computer, so you have to download it, but it only comes with the Windows SDK. You cannot download it by itself, and it's good. You don't want any signing tools out there. If somebody says, here, here's the signing tool, right. don't trust that, yeah, right. because it might have some, uh, it might compromise your system. So these two is the first steps. And then this is the, the second part of this is how to create the certificate, which is these two steps here, how to export the certificate into a file, and then how to sign your executable. So I already have the, the commands. I'm just going to copy paste, but I'm going to explain a little bit about certain important details on each command. But let's go ahead and take a look at this. I'm not going to download it. I'm just going to show you the page just so you have an idea. Yeah, it was, what, like 130 megs or so? Well, that's the thing. When I when I when when you go here and get this, you download the installer. That's a very small file. And it will prompt you. And let me show you because I could just go ahead and show you. When you double click on it, it will prompt you if you want to download everything or not. So it asks you where, next, and then it asks you what you want to download. This is the important part. Uh, if you don't want anything else, you don't have to download it. But these two are the ones that I'm referring to, which is the app certification kit. And to install that, you need this app ver verifier for Windows. So you need those two. The, it, it, when I tried it, it said 170 megabytes. Right now it's saying 88. I don't know if it is just updated or something. I have no idea. It's just different sizes. You download it, install it. And an additional step is to uh, this. I did it myself. The sign tool, if you go ahead and open uh, PowerShell and you use sign tool, it will not work because you have to add the path for this into your system path. I don't know if you if you know how to do that, but usually it's a very simple thing. You go to your setting about in your computer system, mm -hmm. go to a path and yes. environment path and just add it there. It's not needed. The only thing is that if you want to use the, the tool, you have to go to the folder where it is in order to use it. You cannot just you do have what to navigate I'm just... to where the sign tools is and bring in right. your executable, or you can give it the path to the file. But right, exactly. what I always do is just bring, you know, I create a temp folder and I bring this tool there and I bring my right. other tool And then you folder. just do everything yeah. in that temp folder, Absolutely. right? <laughs> yeah. But in general, that's, I just add it to my path, my environment path, so that I didn't have to do any of that. I just call the sign tool, whatever I am, which is what I'm going to be showing next. So let's go ahead and... Uh, do this. So I'm going to go to the script that I want to certify. In this case, I'm just going to compile this up. So I'm just going to compile the script and I'm going to, I think I shouldn't have done that. It would default to 34 bit, but I don't think it cares. So here you will notice that I just have five tabs and one of them is supposed to be that it is digitally signed. If you don't have the tab, 
is because the, the program is not signed. And a lot of programs that you use on a daily basis are not digitally signed. That's okay. It's not that there's any problems with it. It's just in certain situations, you get a warning saying, hey, this is not signed. I don't know who created this. If you're getting the warning, you can self-sign it for yourself and you can do this for any uh, application. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna sh hold shift and right click here and use the PowerShell window here. That's a little thing that not many people know about. And even though uh, you can type this out, but I just have it like this for time's sake. Okay, so what we're gonna do, let me go ahead and uh, copy the first command and I'm gonna paste it here. Make sure that the certification location says current user if you don't want to get any errors. If not, you will need to be an admin to do that. I think I hit enter, didn't I? Let me see. And the subject was the topic? Yeah. So the subject is just a, a custom name. It could be anything. I will show you where to look for that later, but it, it could be anything. It doesn't matter. So now that I just did it, I didn't get any errors. That means that that variable now has a certificate ID is what is happening. So that variable is going to be used later. Now I'm going to create a password. I just put any password here. doesn't matter what it is. Paste it. Um, and that is a PowerShell thing that it grabs a string and converts it into a secure string. I don't know what that is. I have never used it that much. But for now, the most important part is this guy. And this is where you use the certificate and the password, right? So those are the two main things and a file path to how you wanna name it. Usually I just put the name of the thing and PFX is the extension of this type of file, the certificate. So I'm gonna use this, export the PFX certificate and it's gonna grab these two variables that I just created and it's gonna tell me, hey, it was created and you will see a file now that is like that. This is the file that I told you. Probably they could probably double click and you can import it into their system as well. Okay, okay. so right. right, so I can I can give you this file into your which, system, and now my file my executable is certificate, which is something we might even consider doing because as long as people trust us, we can say right. here here's our certificate, just use it. And I I cannot get one hundred percent guarantee that that's going to work, but I think that's. That's possible because, for example, Fiddler does this. They have a certificate that you have to install to see network traffic. Right. right. That's what they do. They do not create a file, though, but they do it in, an, in another way. But they tell you, hey, you can trust our certificate, which right. is called don't trust, <laughs> which is funny. But that's it. You, you just created the certificate. Uh, uh, that's the whole thing. Okay, so now let's go ahead and sign the executable. What we're going to do is just copy this command. In that command, you will notice that I, I just made sure to add this here, the SHA-1, because when I created my certificate, I didn't specify what algorithm I was going to use, and it defaults to that. But that is no longer the default. They don't like it. The default should be two, 256. But if you don't specify 256 up here, then you cannot use it down here. So I'm just going to use this one, copy that, paste it, hit enter, and it says done, right? It was successful. And now how that looks is that you can right click on your program, click on properties, and now you have digital signatures here, and it tells you what the digest algorithm is and cool. other things, right? So that, that, that means now this is cert certified and you shouldn't get any warnings anymore. But um, that is basically the process. It's a four-step process, basically. And after that, you could delete the other files. So you can take that, you on your computer, can take that executable, put right. it wherever you want on your computer. And it's certified. Right. 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 Yeah. yeah, it doesn't matter. It, this, this PFX file is not needed any longer. I could just delete it if I wanted to. The the file itself is already compiled. I don't, I don't need to have anything else. So this would be... Uh, the the uh, a certified executable in your computer it doesn't work. If you give this to somebody else, they're gonna say, "Hey, we do not know who this who created this, and the certification is invalid." Can let's say awesome, um, real quickly. I mean, can you look on your computer if if that where did did you already delete the PFX or whatever oh, file that I, was? I could just yeah. yeah, I could just. So, how would someone go about adding this? 
to their certificates. Let's pretend double it's click. not you. No, double click. It is. It, oh, if you really? double click okay. it, it goes ahead and says the certificate nice. import we say. And usually that's the question, whether it's in the, on the local machine or the current user. But and this is the this is the part that I didn't um, know. There is this MF, MMC program, the management console, that you can add or remove information about certificates. That's what I want to add. I want to use my service account. So okay. And now I can see all the certificates on my computer, especially in the personal ones, which is the one that I just created. Here, if I press the letter A, I will find the certificate that I just created. And you will see all the other certificates that get installed automatically. You see that? So other programs like Adobe, Zoom, everybody creates certificates and this is the one that i told you the fiddler one that says do not trust and i was like yeah that's funny <laughs> they, are the only, they are the only ones that say hey do not trust this because in general trusting certificates from people that you do not um uh, trust is not a good idea it's, it, it can compromise your your computer but in general this is how you can see it the process is not that long uh, um we can just go ahead and give this as a file or uh, something that they could follow and uh, yeah, those are the steps to self-sign your programs. Awesome, man. So we'll, we'll put that URL up here on the screen as a download. And uh, again, make sure you update some of the stuff, change, maybe change the password, right? This, that's yeah, strange. of course. Yeah. 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 Uh, but it it's, you know, it's something that may not solve all your problems, but at least it's something that it's, like you said, relatively simple. Right. I make it a generic one. And this, I will by the way, while we're in this, you mentioned... You're using SHA-1 down below because you didn't use 256 or something above. If you were making both of these 256, can you show how you would update the one up above to be the 256? Right. So what, what we would do is there is, let me give you this here. If you look for it, that it says SHA, you see hash algorithm this is the one that you would have to use so the hash algorithm is the one that you have to pass as a parameter so probably you would put it somewhere about here and that would be sha256 okay right? so i'm then, just telling it what the algorithm right. is so down here i could either not use that because now by default it goes to 256 oh, okay. or i could just go ahead and uh, say SHA-256, that's basically the main idea behind cool. it. Awesome, so let us know if you have any questions, comment below if this, uh, if you have questions or if you learned something here, please like the video, it really helps us out. And thank you very much.